All right, so let's get down to business. This video is all about Adobe Illustrator. Well, as you can see here, I'm using the seven day trial. <laughs> Let me be clear here. I'm not an Adobe Illustrator expert. I don't really know anything about Illustrator. I've used it some, but uh, like under 20 hours. So this is by no means some sort of video where you explain like this feature is missing or this feature is bad or I don't know. I don't know what features are in the program. I, I have no idea. Um, I'm more of a Photoshop guy. I've used Photoshop for over 15 years. So I remember watching these old <laughs> Dick McClelland videos about Photoshop sex and how vectors were an amazing new feature. And they kind of are an amazing feature in Photoshop uh, today. And I've used them quite a bit. So here's some of the stuff I do with Photoshop, like web design and stuff and other types of design. But the thing is, a client contacted me, they wanted me to do a UI for a VST plugin. So I've done some UI work on games and that sort of thing, but he specifically asked me to do a UI that could be exported to SVG format. So what are the options? I need to start working on some sort of uh, UI. And I started with Inkscape, but the client said that he didn't want me working on Inkscape because it's been very unstable for him and he was uh, expecting crashes. So I decided like, okay, I'm just gonna download the trial version of Illustrator and see how the workflow is in that program. It should be good because it's kind of the industry standard. So I'm glad I downloaded the trial version because I have to say I'm not very pleased with this at all. And why is that? Well, the user experience in Illustrator is, to me at least, very confusing. I've used a lot of um, vector stuff in Photoshop, so I thought maybe it worked similarly in Illustrator. And by the way, this is not how the program looks for the beginner. It's actually if we go to the workspaces and go to the essentials and we turn off the control panel, this is actually what the program looks like to the beginner, I think. I think I turned everything off. <laughs> so I, I can see the thought process here. The developers thought that, well, people find this program confusing because there are so many buttons and controls and all of that stuff. But what the solution was to them is to hide everything that the user needs. So now there is less clutter. Now there are less controls uh, on the user interface. But now the user doesn't know if I need to do something, is there a tool for this? Is there a setting for this thing? Or is it just hidden somewhere? And so like I said, I'm not making any sort of print stuff. I'm not making any sort of like web layout. I'm, I'm just trying to make a UI for a plugin. So like with all graphics work, you need references. So let me pick something up. Okay, so here's a very well-known EDM synthesizer called Serum. And if I wanted to do something similar, how would I even start with this? Well, in Photoshop, it's quite simple. Let's zoom in here. Let's make a square or rectangle. And there are a couple of ways to go about this. And let's just do it the old fashioned way. You select the color for the rectangle. Then you go to the layer styles. You do a gradient overlay. Turn the opacity down a little bit. Then you do like a inner glow or something. And we add a drop shadow. And that's pretty much it. And you can scale this down and we're off to a good start. Now, how do you do this in Illustrator? I don't know. We have a rectangle, so <laughs> that's a start. Okay, we can scale this down and let's try to make this uh, some, some type of square. Okay, I want to change the color of this. How do we do that? Here, this is like, this is the best we've got, but I want to select this color. How do we do that? Well, do we double click here? That doesn't do anything. Do we double? No, that doesn't do anything. Well, here's a color. We can double click here. Can we now select this? No. Why not? It doesn't like it, nothing works in this program. Well, we have a high dropper here somewhere. Like, uh, here we go. We can select the color and boom, there you go. Colored rectangle. But is there a hotkey for this? Like in Photoshop, it's Alt. You hold Alt and you can use the eyedropper. It doesn't work here. Uh, control, no. Shift, Alt, Control. No, it doesn't work. So you can't select the color for this like that. It's just, you have to use the eyedropper color. And what's the hotkey for the eyedropper? It's I. Oh, see, your hand is typically at the uh, very left side of the keyboard. And your other hand is constantly on the mouse because you, this program requires for you to use so much mouse that it so you have to move your hand you have to look down to the keyboard press i and select the color 
and then you have to select another tool so you look down on the keyboard to move your hand again and select another tool typically you don't have to look at the keyboard because you just select like tools that are near the uh, left side of the keyboard but here you have to constantly use i to select and you, you have to look down because you if you can't do it without looking down you are a keyboard god i don't know how you do that thing or you can use mouse like you use mouse for everything else in illustrator why not that but why doesn't this this should change to the like previous tool after we select the, the color. Because why would I want to select two colors for the same thing? It doesn't make any sense. There should be just like a hotkey. If you hold Alt and just select a color on the screen then and release the Alt, then it should work. Like in Photoshop. Why can't you select the color here? If you have this color picker open, uh, you should be able to click a color and it would select that color. But it, there's not even an icon here that would like allow you to do that can't do it here either and this is like even worse because uh i guess you can change it here yeah this is this is better so okay we have the colored rectangle now i want to add a gradient to it how do we do that well we can't add a gradient to the rectangle anywhere here if we really want to do a gradient we should probably oh my god what is this now fill opacity yeah all right settle down settle down uh so we have a gradient tool and it's telling you like free from gradient. This is exactly, I guess this is for the expert users, but I don't care. I'm not an expert. I just want to do the basic stuff, the very bare minimum. And I've used Inkscape some, so I know that you have a gradient tool and you draw gradients with it. Fine. I'm drawing a gradient. How does this work? Uh, you have to select gradient here first. You select like this and then this and then uh, How do you go back if you want to go back to the solid color? Yeah, that that works about right. How do I go back to the to the very last color? Is it this one? Yeah, I think it is. No, that's just gray because this is a little bit blue, isn't it? No, I click the eyedropper. It didn't even select the tool. I clicked the eyedropper. So this is like uh, this is like a little bit. How do I see the color? Like what is this? I have to go here. I have to see like yeah, it it is blue. So you can't select the previous color at least not here. <sighs> okay, so we want to make a gradient. So we select the gradient tool in Inkscape. You just draw the gradient here. Here it doesn't work because you have to select the gradient type first here. But you have to know that it's here because otherwise, can you select it here? No. Can you can you like double? Oh, we can do this. Oh, there we go. It's the uh, it's the five by five pixel thing in the in the middle here. That's how you <laughs> fill the thing with a gradient. Okay, fine. We have a gradient thing open, and that's that's actually pretty nice. I didn't have this at first. So it's, we're actually doing something right here. Wait, did this open previously? If we just do this, like let's back up. If I select the thing here, it doesn't open the gradient panel. So now we don't. We just don't have it. So you actually have to push this. You have to know that this is the magic key that opens up this little panel. But what if you don't have that open? What do you do now? Well, let's get rid of this thing. <sighs> okay, so I want to edit the gradient. And I stumbled upon, <laughs> I stumbled upon this thing. Open the gradient pop-up. And this is like the thing that was on the screen just moments ago. But this is a pop-up. If you click somewhere, it goes away. It just goes away. So... <laughs> What do we want to do? We want to change this color to something. And we have an eyedropper here. So that's pretty nice. And we want to change this to, let's say this here. Why isn't this like the default mode? Why why can't the eyedropper be like the default? That would be so much faster. You, you have to make a whole extra click for everything. If you just want to, why is this not going away now? This is so confusing. I'm, I'm so confused with this UI. If I click here, what, what is going on? So now it's just, did it do this previously? Okay. It was anyway, we have a gradient here and we can turn it around, I guess. Yeah, there we go. And we can probably constrain it to 90 degrees because I want it to go from, actually we can't. How do we do this? If we want to, does it lock? to oh what is what is happening now oh oh my oh my god okay so if we press alt we can change the direction but we can't oh here it goes now it locks what is going on okay this is this is actually what i wanted but let's go back let's go let's just undo undo all this nightmare stuff all right back to here okay so let's add that gradient oh there it is and we want this color here 
and we want this color here. Why is chase? Just give me like this or this maybe. Give me give me something useful. Maybe maybe the gradient tool. That would be great. And so now I want to turn this around right, right. Oh, here we go. So if we just start to draw this, and we, I just want to constrain this like that it goes straight up, but it doesn't. I'm trying to shift, no, control, no, alt, no, all three, no. It's just, it's a free form. And now it's, what is, what is going on? Okay, I need the gradient thing. Uh, location, opacity, so it's 89.1 degrees. And I need to turn this now. Okay, this, this is fine, I don't, yeah, I need to, I need the alt key. And now if I press shift, it, this is like really, you, because I want it to be straight. So why wouldn't it be straight when I like draw it like this? Why wouldn't it immediately go straight like this? What What is this now? It just clicked there. I was holding this and then I like, what? Why is it moving? See, I'm holding it right here. Then it jumps. Does it lock to the middle of the thing? I guess that's really confusing. Is it straight now? No, it's just kind of straight, but I want it to be straight. So now if I just select like this very tiny black dot, no, this one, no, this one, no. How do, how do we turn this again? Do I have the right tool for this? I wanted, to, I wanted to rotate this thing. How do we rotate this thing? Now it's moving this around. I don't, I don't get rid of those. I don't want those around. I can't rotate, I, I can't rotate this anymore. This is what I'm talking about confusing. See how you do this thing with Photoshop? And I don't even have to do the gradient here. I can just, uh, this is what I often do. I use one of these layers and I just add a gradient and then I hold alt and lock it to the <laughs> layer below this one. So now we have a gradient here. I can select whatever I want. I can move it around. Well, this went worse than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where the gradient is anymore. Okay, just get rid of it. Let's let's make another one here. Yeah, because it's in the center somewhere. Let's scale it down to like I don't, okay, lock it there. Now there we go. So this is how we can work with Photoshop. And now that you just have a lot like gradient there. And if you want to rotate it, surprise, surprise, guess rotate button here. That's the thing. You didn't really have like a gradient. Well, you do have a gradient tool. What am I talking about? You do have a gradient tool in Photoshop. So you just need to make a new a layer and then you just drag, hold shift, and there you go. It's straight. You're not wasting time by first drawing something and then going around and rotating it. It's just straight. Okay, whatever. Whatever, we, we know how to do this now, <laughs> don't we? Let's make a square. And this is like, this is my nightmare. It's just starting over and over. Why is this still the rectangle tool? I, I mean, I, I guess if you want to draw like a hundred rectangles like this, I don't know why you would do that. I guess there is like some sort of fringe reason why you would want it to stay as a rectangle tool. But typically in, in some other programs, like let's say Blender for the most counterintuitive programs there are in Blender, if you add a cube on the uh, on the workspace, you get the cube and then it selects some other tool for you to use. But now I, I want to do things with the uh, rectangle. So like, let's round the, that's, that's actually really nice. I like this a lot. This is like intuitive and this is easy to use and it's quick and you don't have to go to some menus and start doing this. So this is the type of stuff that I really like. So props to them for implementing this. But now I want that gradient. So let's, let's get that gradient. And I draw the gradient in because I have to draw like something in first and then I can grab it and rotate it. Now I can rotate it. And now if I hold shift, I can actually lock it down. So <laughs> there you go. 
Oh, this is like the... Oh, right. Okay, I understand. This is just... This is very confusing to me as, as a beginner. If I want to move the gradient, couldn't there be like... You hold control and you just... No, this does something different. This allows you to move the shape. Okay. If I hold alt, it doesn't do anything. So why isn't alt just like move gradient? Coming from Photoshop, that would actually make sense to me. But here you have like a little tiny 3x3 three three black square. And then you have like a little tiny 3x3 three three black circle and i guess yeah if you watch some sort of tutorial you know this but why why is such a convoluted weird thing to do this okay we we have a gradient so let's select the colors for this i think it's, this is like here and this is that now this is taking so many clicks by the way and it's not much better in photoshop if you want to change the gradient like you go here, you have to you have the gradient. You have to cl first click <laughs> to edit the gradient. Then you have to double click this to select the color, and then you have to double click the other thing to select the other color. It's not good. It's not great. Let me be honest with you. And of course, in Photoshop, you can also do the gradient fills. The thing that I like about Photoshop is that my my little square now has a base color, and then I want to add a gradient to it. So it's just adding a little bit of like. Mm. If you take that away, it's more flat. If you put it back on, it's just like a... You're modifying the base color. You're not like making a weird gradient texture for the square. Can you do that here? Because that's what I really want. I want this to be like, yeah, this is the fill. And now I want to add a little gradient on top of it. Can we do that? Just copy, paste, and let's make it... Let's make a, like a proper gradient here. Let's select... How do you make this like black and white? Here you go. And now, how do we change the, we can change the opacity. And this doesn't work in Illustrator. This is something that I really enjoy in Photoshop. You just grab the name and you scrub it and the value goes down. But here you have to press here and you have to press here. It's additional click. This is what I, I'm kind of obsessed about user experience and these are the kind of things that make me insane. When Photoshop, when they added this in, I think it was in CS2, the scrubbing thing, that you hold the name and you, you can just immediately change the opacity or whatever you want. That's ingenious because before that you had to click here and then do the same thing. But now you, you, you just skip the clicking part and you just do it. But in here, this is still stuck in like 1999, where you have to, yeah, you can do, can you just, no, you have to click and then, why is there a menu like this? That you have the value here, and then when you click this, you have the value here again, and you can do it like here, or you can do it here, or uh, what is this thing? There are so many like menus on top of menus, you can do the same thing in so many places, like you can change the opacity here, <laughs> can you change it here? Uh... No, this is actually, oh, this is, this is what I wanted, kind of, but this is not doing exactly, <laughs> this is not doing it the way I imagine. <laughs> like here we can, we can change the opacity and now we have the same effect as we do in Photoshop. But here the opacity, you can't change it like it gives you like 10% increments. I mean, of course you can type it in, but that's even worse than using your mouse. Where did it go? I just clicked enter and then it's like somewhere again. Yeah, and it's 100. I typed in 256. Of course, it shouldn't give you that. But if you hit enter, you just never even know what, what happened. Oh, you can see the opacity here, but that's not the right opacity. Why do I keep clicking this? I want, I want to edit the gradient, so I should be clicking this thing. And this is the beginning. This is like the essentials workspace. This is for the for the very beginners. Okay, let's select something use, useful, like let's go to, I don't know, I guess web design is the closest one for like UI design. So let's click that and we get all of these things. So now we have this open so we can actually do like some real work. And if we type in 256, we see that it's actually 100 and not 256. But we, can, we can change this here. This just cracks me up, like you select 40%. And I guess that makes sense because who wants like 41%? Well, some people do. But see, so yeah, this was hidden somewhere. Now we have it here, so it makes our life a little bit easier. Why is this 49 now? Oh, so this is 40 and this is 60. So it's like we clicked at the middle. So it's... Uh, should the opacity change 
based on if you if, if the first time you click this you want it to be 50 but you you can't quite like <laughs> you can't aim it like straight to the middle so you click oh oh my god i did it but <laughs> if you click like here it's 51 percent but you wanted it to be 50 so if you like drag it down with control or something it should just scrub it down to 50 so you don't have to do extra clicks like oh no i actually meant 50 so i have to click here or i have to go here and type in five zero and i want this location to be 50 also so why can't it just like what what is this now if i hold alt it creates like another one oh alt copies it okay that makes sense that's actually good that's i like that but here why doesn't it like uh, lock to certain increments you have to go in and you have to manually go in and just click here and click here and click here and just click. It's so much clicking. It's a nightmare. <laughs> I know I'm over-dramatizing this, but it, it's really, it starts to feel like it. And you have to click the, here. If you want like a gradual thing, you have to constantly keep like clicking and changing these to... It's... this. There's a better way to do this. And it doesn't take that much imagination to figure out, like, okay, if, if somebody wants to make a new dot here and wants to lock it to, like, say, 20, you should be able to just click control or something, and it locks to 20. And then if he wants the uh, opacity to change to 20, also he, he'll additionally hold shift or something. So now we have a gradient on top of that, but that's another object. So that's not exactly what I wanted. Anyway, now we want to add these little bright things, and that's uh, what you use stroke for. And here's stroke in the side panel here. So let's just, uh, let's press up a couple of times. Oh, one time is okay. We have a stroke now, and that's fine and all, but we want it to be a little brighter. The thing with the bright stroke in these things is that it's a little bit brighter here, and a little bit duller here to match the gradient of the piece. How do we do that? Well, in Photoshop, if you remember, it does that thing automatically. If you if you can believe that, if we click here, it's a little bit brighter. If we click here, it's a little bit darker. How does it do that? Well, we go to the inner glow. The blend mode is set to screen. Can we do that in Illustrator? Uh, maybe. I don't know. These are really confusing too. Because I often, like in this case, I want the stroke to be on the inside. Well, which one is it? These icons are the worst icons i've ever seen they convey no information whenever i have to change like the like the um stroke um location i go to the stroke and i have to look at all of these icons first of all i have to find like which one of these is the border one and then i'm like oh oh this is the aligned stroke and then i have to start looking at okay which one is the outer one which one is the inner one which i have to look at all of them and oftentimes I would just like leave my mouse here and just look at the tool tips to figure out which one I need to use. So this this is like, this is not helping. At least in Photoshop, this is simple. Outside, inside, center. It requires an additional click, yes, but it's still faster than these convoluted weird ass icons that by the way, made their way in the Photoshop. I guess copy pasted from Illustrator. And the thing is here too, if we go to the color select, like it doesn't show you the color that I'm picking. Why? I have to click OK to see the color that I want the stroke to. That is insane. I'm picking like a bright color here. And I'm OK. And it changes the color only when I click OK. That is, you have that functionality already. If I click the stroke here and I select the color, I can immediately see the color change here. It's a miracle. How did they do this 10 years ago? But I guess that's another thing that was just copy pasted from Illustrator. Because here, if you want to change the stroke, by the way, you have to change the <laughs> in this one. This is a weird ass convention. I don't, the reasonable thing would be to have uh, like fill color and stroke color and you just click it and you select a, like, why isn't there, I guess we can, I guess we can, uh, no, we have s only the swatches here. We don't even have like a color wheel or something. 
Really? Am I dreaming? See, because I want I want to see like this, but not this. Um. Yeah, there we go. No, 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 no. Well, this is this is not helpful. I want to see like I want to see this color pick because this is actually useful. Not like this. You can't pick a color in this thing. Hide options. Okay. Color guide. Yeah. Okay. This is. All right, this is this is not horrible, but so this is the best we get. We don't even get like this thing. Oh, here we go. You have to double click this thing to get this window. This is so strange. There's like no unity in any of this stuff. And what is this shadow here? What is this thing? Oh my lord. And again, this is why I said it's like imported from from Illustrator because here you don't get a preview. If I want the thing, like, you have to click OK. Fine, fine, whatever. Uh, what happened to our... I was clicking around and we lost our... It was casualty of war. We lost our... our. Oh, there we go. It's turned around again, but there we go, at least. There, and reverse it, and that's fine. And let's select the uh, stroke, and we want the stroke to be on the inside, so we select, like... Which one is this? On outside. Well, how do? Oh, this is the inside one because that's the stroke. I thought this was the stroke, the the thin line here. No, that's the object. Like these are so confusing. These icons. Who came up with these? Anyway, <laughs> so now I just want a little like gradient here that goes from. But uh, you can't do a little brighter gradient unless you can do one here. No. So you have to like again select gradient. You again have to turn it around and turn it around, and you again you have to select the colors. And you can. I don't want to pick these. No, no, just no. Go the this one, and then we go here, and this this keeps resetting to this RGB thing. But it's useless. This is the useful one because here you can just brighten the thing up. You can. It's like the saturation. This is like actually useful to any any <laughs> graphic designer. But I have to do this is so many clicks. You know what? We want to make another UI element. We we have that's perfect. Yeah. So we want to make this brighter <laughs> gray box now. So we so we drag in the rectangle and we get this like it's all right. It's not it's not the worst thing ever. If I want to reset everything, there should be like a reset button. So that that doesn't need to be. It's just Click one, two, three, four, four clicks, and you get to a empty rectangle. Uh, five clicks, and you can actually move it. Oh, it just selected that thing because we have to. So now we not we want a cool little fill with a cool little uh, gradient. So if we just click this, uh, it selects the stroke. That's Oh, all right. Just undo this real quick, and we have to select this thing to in, in the front. I guess this is like kind of useful. Okay, and now we get, well, now we get the uh, gradient. But uh, now we have to start changing the colors here. Okay, so we select the this thing. Can we just do this? Yeah. Okay. Select this. All right. All right. So we have the thing, but it's wrong side up. So we have to minus ninety. Let's let's make it. Let's make it obvious. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it, it's it's a stroke, and we need a gradient, and we need to make the gradient like uh, uh, it needs to be. It needs to be a different type of gradient. This thing. There we go. But can't we edit this like with this thing? No. So I can't edit the gradient of the stroke. That's kind of disappointing. And I want it to be like this, okay. But what if I... It would be just so much easier if I just had like white stroke. Okay, we copy this, paste in place. Okay. And we turn, uh, we turn this on, we turn this off. And we just want to use the stroke as a level Transparency, opacity. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is this is more like it. What what is this button? 
Oh. But because it was at the bottom of the screen, you cannot see it? Are you kidding me? No. If we if we click the arrow, you can't change the value because it doesn't show on the screen. And you can't scrub it because that doesn't exist in Illustrator. It's only been in development longer than Photoshop. So you have to drag this out of here so you can actually use the thing. But at least we get the preview. Holy moly. But this is what I want. Like now, now it's brighter here, it's darker here, and it just have a thing on screen. But if you if you move either one of these, it's not very ideal, and I shouldn't have to explain why. Is there a way to do this? Because if there is, I want to find out how you do this. How do you do this thing? Let's 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 get rid of this thing. Let's get. This here, opacity. Oh, right, you can't do that. So it just turns the opacity of everything down. Uh, I don't, I don't think there's a way to do that. I also use this, but there's no alpha. All right. Well, we don't have it. There you go. That's the, that's the answer. 